Hey, what's up everybody? In last week's episode, we took the Urban Carry G2 holster out to the range, tested it out and talked about it a bit. Today, we're gonna do some dry fire practice and talk about how you can get proficient with this holster in the home. All right, so once again, working with the Lieutenant size Urban Carry G2 holster with the Springfield XDM 9mm. Now, we haven't talked too much about dry fire practice here on this channel yet. So first thing that we wanna make sure of is that we have an empty gun and that we have no ammunition around. Last thing that we want when we're doing dry fire in our home is an accidental discharge. That would be horrible for multiple reasons, but the biggest ones is that we don't wanna hurt anybody and we don't wanna destroy any property. Okay, so, Accidental discharge, no bueno. So empty gun, no magazine, no ammunition anywhere around. Just an organizational tip for me, I keep all of my ammunition in ammo cans. It doesn't matter if it's in boxes or not. I keep everything in ammo cans just so that it's all locked down. And then when I dry fire with this gun, this is my daily carry gun. So this has defensive ammunition in it all the time. When I do dry fire practice, I clear it and I put that magazine in my ammo can lock it away okay so that way it is nowhere around there's no possibility of that stray round just finding its way down into my chamber okay all right so let's get this firearm into the holster now one of the the things that i noticed when i was watching some review videos on the urban carry holsters in general uh, but specifically preparing for the review that i did on the g2 holster which if you haven't seen then we will link up to it over here but one of the the common themes that i saw with people that had negatives to say about the urban carry holster systems is that uh, they're talking about fumbling around with the holster, they're talking about printing in weird places. And that was the main reason and thinking behind taking a couple of weeks to practice and train with this holster before I shot my review video. It seems that a lot of those people, they unboxed it, they mounted it on themselves, and they had gripes about it because of the way that things were working. And you could clearly tell in a lot of those videos because the holster was not even form-fitted to the firearm. So the firearm had not been living in that holster for very long. Just like anything else, once you change one thing in your carry regimen, you have to train with it. You have to get proficient with it. There's a muscle memory behind everything that you do with a firearm. Removing that finger from the trigger guard when you aren't ready to fire, that's a muscle memory thing. It's not something that you consciously think about all the time unless you're just starting out with firearms. Coming up and presenting your sights on target, that's a muscle memory thing. The draw of the holster, a muscle memory thing as well. If you added a light or a laser, there's a whole new training gamut that you have to go through. Changing the holster that you use for your everyday carry, major muscle memory changes, okay? And so training and getting proficient with this holster is the number one key to success. So the first thing that I did when I got the Urban Carry G2 holster was I tried on every pair of pants that I own and I put this Urban Carry holster in it. Um, some of the pants worked really well. Some of the pants didn't work so well. My really tight jeans printed like crazy. It looked like I was carrying an old school Game Boy in my pocket. But the first day that I really carried this holster, I carried it in the tightest pair of jeans that I had. Basically, I wanted to see how I could get through the day and if it was largely noticeable. And what I found was that the holster was still extremely comfortable. People didn't stop and draw their attention to the holster the way that they would if I was wearing a tight shirt, printing on the side, or revealing the firearm if I was reaching up or anything like that. And ultimately, I made it through the day carrying that holster the whole day. That's tip number one. Try it on with every pair of pants that you own. Try it on with different shirts. Try it on with the things that you wear on a daily basis. That's really important. This is an everyday carry option. Second tip that I have for you is put it on and leave it on, okay? This holster is made of leather. It comes pretty stiff and it molds to you. It molds to your gun, it molds to your situation, everything, that you, the way that you carry it, the position that you carry it in. So put it on and leave it on. Just take it around with you and don't even be worried about the draw or anything like that. Just take a couple of days 
and carry it. The third tip that I have for you is dry fire practice. Okay, so after you get home from your daily events carrying the holster, come home and just first thing that I did was just get a feel for grabbing onto this flap. You know, this has the, there's the magnetic flap here. Just get a feel for grabbing onto that flap. Don't pull the firearm out because then it's gonna take you time to put it in. You wanna develop muscle memory. And to develop muscle memory, you just have to do a repeated action multiple times. Okay, so coming from different angles, coming from surrender position, coming from the pockets, put your hands on a table and come for it. Okay, so this is, this is just the first step. You just do this as many times as you can without getting tired of it, okay? You want your body to just naturally go to this position because regardless of if you have your shirt tucked in or if you have your shirt untucked, you're gonna be grabbing for the same spot, the same position. I don't care if you do it while you walk around the house. You can do it while you're sitting there watching TV. The most important thing is just to develop the muscle memory of where this holster's flap is because that's your contact point with the holster. Second part of the dry fire practice is just to combine that grab with the pop or the ejection of the firearm. It takes a certain kind of pop to get this thing out sometimes. So depending on the pants that you're wearing, for me, I have just figured out a way to make sure that my pants and my belt are adjusted in the proper way so that the ejection movement and motion is the same every time. I've found that a fast ejection is the easiest. So just to grab this flap and just to jerk this thing up, okay? And you notice the way that my hand here is holding on to this flap. Okay, it's just gripped on here the same way that I was grabbing onto it with my fingertips. And then I just yank this thing up. Now this position of my support hand gives a spot for my other hand to index. My thumb of my weapon hand rests on the fingers of my support hand and then rolls over the butt of the gun, okay? So that makes for an easy and repeatable action. That's the biggest thing with muscle memory, is making sure that your actions are simple and repeatable. You just grab and jerk and do that from a few different positions. So again, you're gonna do this ejection process as many times as you can. And you notice that when I eject this firearm, my weapon hand is immediately rolling up under the knuckles. And I'm gonna do that with the shirt untucked. And I'm gonna do that with the shirt tucked in. Okay, I just wanna make sure that I am developing the muscle memory that is correct for the situations that I live my life in. If you never tuck your shirt in, then don't tuck your shirt in during your dry fire practice. Only do the things that you do in your life. Don't do excessive, wasted effort on motions that you are never gonna complete in real life situations. So now that we've practiced first the initiation of the draw and second the ejection of the firearm, the third that we wanna practice is the removal of the gun from the holster letting the holster go and it just dangles down here this holster just flops and then the indexing out on target for me i just focus on a light switch i just come out here present on target and pull the trigger on the light switch that light switch no longer a threat to me and the last tip that i can give you for gaining proficiency with this holster is to do this regularly. When you're just sitting there watching TV, clear out your firearm and practice a few of these motions, okay? Even just a couple of times a day, that will build your muscle memory on that way. When you are faced with that situation where you have to deploy your weapon under stress, you can do that with natural instinct and muscle memory. Now remember guys, any practice with a firearm should be done with extreme care. Dry fire is no different. Just because there's no rounds in the firearm doesn't mean that we can do whatever we want with it. Whatever we do when we're practicing is the same things that we do in real life situations. So if we practice in a way that is unsafe, then we run the risk of living our lives in a way that is unsafe. And that can have consequences for everyone around us, especially in these situations. So be careful when you're dry fire 
unifier training and make sure that all of your training relates to each other. Until next time, be safe. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. Peace out.